Hello, Amber. Thank you very much for being here today. Can you tell us a bit more about your mission and how you support women in tech and female founders in general? So uh, we started an accelerator in, uh, well, last year, actually, that is focused on making female founders VC investable. So I'm sure you know the data, 1% of all VC funding goes to female founders, 8% goes to uh, female co-founded companies, and more than 90% basically goes to all men teams. And we're here to change the status quo. Some people tell you, actually, there's not enough companies founded by women, but you'd be surprised in the UK, at least 33% of all startups are founded by women, so a third. But we're not getting the third of the funding, so we need to do something to, to get there. And so we launched the program with the idea of really acting on the pain points of why women don't get funded. So we went on a three-month journey, we spoke with academics, we spoke with founders, we spoke with investors, and basically what we found out is that there's two main pain points for female founders. The first one is the network. So data will show you 82% of all VC funded startups come through a warm introduction. If you have a warm introduction, you have 13 times more chances of going to the investment committee. Women networks are smaller than the men. The probability of getting a warm introduction is lower. Probability of getting funded is lower. So how do we solve this? Is by building this really large network of VC partners around us. We currently have over 200 VC partners and we become this warm introduction to, uh, uh, to, to, VC, uh, to our founders, to VCs. The second pain point is much more interesting and it actually has to do with the pitch. And there's two main reports that uh, inspired us. The first one was in the Harvard Business Review, and it showed that women are asked preventive questions and men are asked promotive questions. So men are asked about the opportunities of the business. Women are asked about the risk of the business. You tell me why is this relevant? It is relevant because this report shows you that if you're asked a preventive question, you raise five times less than if you're asked a promotive question. And funny enough, both male and female investors would ask female founders a uh, preventive question. And I am I'm the first one to raise my hand because I used to do that m myself, right? Um, and, um, and so, and so, yes. And, and the second one is called Don't Pitch Like a Girl. Yeah, um, I love the title. And that one is very interesting because it shows the bias is not necessarily against women per se. The bias is against feminine uh, pitching style when, when, you're, when you're pitching VCs. And basically what they did, they had four cohorts. They had the cohort of uh, males with masculine pitching style, males with feminine pitching style, and similar for women. The VC rated the highest, obviously, the men with the masculine pitching styles. But right below them, surprisingly, it was the women with the masculine pitching styles. Right. So basically, it shows that VCs in their mind, they have this image of what a successful CEO of or successful founder of a startup should sound like, like and, and, and look like. And I will tell you the truth. Some of the things that uh, we came across during the first cohort that we launched last year were actually very surprising. We noticed that women don't like to talk about themselves. Yeah, there's a, um, a sense of shyness and shame. I don't want to sound too arrogant. I don't want to say how great I am. And uh, so, you know, some of our founders, fantastic founder, super talented, great career. They would not even tell us what they have previously achieved. And another thing we noticed is the language that women use. Women like to use a diminutive language rather than a, a very assertive language. So I usually say when men are 50% sure, they tell you, I can, I think, I will. When women are 99% sure, they will tell you, I hope, I believe, I think. And so it's very important to you know, you're, you're selling yourself, basically, when you're pitching investor. You're selling yourself, you're selling your vision. If you're not using an assertive language, people are not going to buy into it, right? And so the program is obviously focused on what traditional accelerators do, but the, the I would say the unique selling proposition for it is uh, going hand in hand with the startup in building their pitch, in training them on how to pitch, training them on the preventive questions, how to answer preventive questions, how to uh, push for promotive answers, and then starting to put them in front of the VCs. We hold, hold them hand uh, by hand from the start all the way to the term sheet process. 
And uh, how do you identify promising projects and what are some key factors that you look for when people pitch? So at the early stage, I would say the team is the most important. Uh, the second thing is a clear vision of what your product is. So you'd be surprised how many founders cannot explain in simple terms what is the problem you're solving for and what is actually the product that you have built, right? Um, the third thing I would say is a good product market fit, which is a little bit, yeah, it takes a little bit longer, a little bit longer to, uh, uh, to get there, but yeah. Excellent. And now let's talk about decentralized finance a bit. So can you tell me what drew you to the world of decentralized finance and what you think are some key trends to look for in that area? Uh, what drew me? So I was in finance for you know, most of my career. Um, so for me, it was a logical step. Uh, I missed on the internet revolution. Yeah. And I didn't want to miss on the crypto revolution. Uh, so I, you know, I wanted to be at the right place in the right time when things were changing and drive, drive change rather than seeing people driving change. And uh, as someone who has been recognized for your leadership and your contribution to the crypto and the blockchain space, what advice would you give to people looking to pursue careers in that area? Uh, potentially, this year is not the good year. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I'm joking. I think you know it's very. Don't be scared. The technology in itself, you, you don't need to be a developer to be able to be in the in, in Web3, in the crypto space. You have a lot of free resources on the internet that are fantastic at explaining everything and anything. So use that. And I highly would advise people, yes, to come into the space. It's a very, uh, very dynamic space. Uh, too masculine still, so we need to see more women and, you know, uh, uh, initiatives like Alice in, uh, in Blockchains and Web3 Tales are really needed to bring more money and uh, encourage women to, uh, uh, to come into the space. Yeah. Excellent. And now I have a quick round of this or that questions for you. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go anyway, okay? Go. <laughs> build fast or build correctly? Build fast. Open source or proprietary software? Open source. Mm, tech focused or diversified portfolio? Diversified portfolio. Yeah. And uh, digital gaming or physical board games? Oh, physical board games. Sorry. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a geek. <laughs> Thank you very much, Amber. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.